everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Put Solar on It, Transforming CNI Solar Applications. I'm Kelsey Misbrenner, editor with Solar Power World. Before we begin, we wanted to let you know about our application widgets at the bottom of your screen. You can move and resize them however you'd like. Submit any questions related to today's webinar via the Q&A widgets. Our presenters will answer your questions at the end of the webinar. We encourage you to tweet with us. Simply sign in through the Twitter box. Today's hashtag is automatically added to your tweets. And finally, if you're watching this on demand, you can still use all the features I went over. Let's get started with today's webinar, Put Solar on It, Transforming CNI Solar Applications. Today's speakers are Nick Falcho, Gary Hescote, Blake Randolph, and Stuart Fox. Nick is the Applications Engineer for SunGrow. Gary is a Sales Engineer for Tygo Energy. Blake is a Regional Engineering Manager for CED Green Tech. And Stuart is Head of Engineering and Technical Sales for CED. And now I'll turn it over to Nick. Good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you again for joining. Um, today we're gonna be covering uh, the evolving trends in commercial PV applications as it relates to some of the uh, evolving technology and trends that we're seeing in the marketplace. The objective for today and what's on the agenda is we're going to give uh, brief introdu introductions of ourselves, all the presenters here. Um, then CED Green Tech is going to go over some exciting new capabilities that they have within their team. SunGrow is going to give, um, which is myself here, uh, we're going to give a brief overview of who SunGrow is, uh, what's in our, our DNA, a little bit of our history, and some uh, uh, information on the commercial and industrial products that we offer. And then we're going to hand it over to Tygo, and uh, we're going to kind of wrap it up nicely with some Q&A at the end. And the methodology of the evolution and the presentation material here is to show the partnership between all three entities that are here. So um, definitely please use the, uh, the Q&A feature that's here to ask whatever questions you might have. And if we can't get to them during the presentation, then we will have um, some moderation time at the end to make sure that all the, all the questions are answered. All right, so a brief intro about uh, myself. My name is Nick Valcho. I'm the Applications Engineering Manager for Channel Sales and Distribution here at SunGrow. Um, I've been in PV for just about 10 years now, just shy of a decade. Um, prior to holding this position at SunGrow, I was with Huawei Fusion Solar USA as the Service Manager for North America. And uh, before that, I, I cut my teeth in the solar industry at SMA America. And I did everything from field service to uh, research and development and serviceability at the Denver facility. Um, and then uh, worked with the, uh, the, the global service product team uh, developing uh, service products and extended warranties. So I've kind of had uh, a full, full gamut in the, in, in the solar industry and, and very happy to be where I am. Uh, SunGrow is really taking charge and leading the forefront with some pretty exciting new things that are happening. So it's great to be here. Thank you all for attending, and I'll hand it over to Gary here. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gary Hethcote, sales engineer for Tygo. I've been with Tygo about four years, and I've been in the solar industry about 12 since 2009. Happy to be here. Thank you. And uh, I'm Blake Randolph. Uh, I'm with CED Green Tech on the engineering side. Uh, I've been in the solar industry since 2010. Uh, first starting out uh, actually in the R&D side and then shortly after moving to design and have been in design since. Uh, now I'm, I've been with uh, CED Green Tech a full year. And hi, this is Stuart Fox. I'm the, uh, I, <clears throat> run uh, engineering and technical sales at CED. And um, I've had the opportunity to watch uh, and, and work with uh, Tygo and SunGrow as they've uh, entered the US market and uh, commercial and industrial sector. Okay, I think uh, I'm up first here. So, um, Again, I'm Blake Randolph. I'm the Regional Engineering Manager for CED Green Tech on the Commercial Division. 
and I'm here to introduce our commercial design and engineering services. Uh, I'm sure many of you have reached out or re researched or even tried other engineering services before, but uh, I really want to share what I feel like sets us apart from those other uh, services. Um, we are real people. We're not just an impersonal dashboard or platform. Um, from my experience, those other types of services do not factor in how to properly accommodate the uh, you know, additional constraints you or your project may have. Uh, well, we are real people like myself. Uh, I, I do, I actually manage projects uh, right now um, <clears throat> that work with you through all the needs that your individual projects have. Uh, we have experienced personnel that have seen a variety of projects that want to work with you to provide the engineering services that you need. Whether you've tried engineering services in the past or not, we try to separate ourselves by providing another layer of review for not just technical application, but also cost-saving measures. Um, our aim is to provide design and energy services that meet your expectations and get projects through permitting and interconnection the first time. Uh, but also we have uh, worked with difficult HJs. So if you do experience pushback, we can work with you to ultimately get, you, get your projects to build status. We have an extensive network of design and drafting specialists who are available to support us regardless of the time of the year. So we are here to help you with your projects when you need us. We provide a variety of design and engineering options for commercial rooftop, ground mounts, and solar canopies. Each offering is aimed to provide uh, you just with provide you just with what you need. If you are looking for a wire diagram, we can provide it. If you need a little bit more, like a site plan, we can add that in as well. If you're looking for a full plan set to try to help you with your, your permit package. Uh, that's that's our our biggest offering right now is that we help you with that. Additionally, we offer uh, professional engineering services. We're happy to provide that with or without any of the drafting packages that we offer. Um, this is a brief example of our wire diagrams and the page formats that come with each. Uh, and additionally is our site and wire diagrams offering showing the additional pages there. Uh, these options tend to be a little bit more for interconnection purposes, uh, but uh, we're happy to provide them for whatever your needs may be. Similar to the last slide though, we have this, show, this is showcasing our typical full plan set or permit package offering which basically adds additional pages that we find are required to help a project get through permitting and may also be helpful during construction. Uh, as with all of our offerings, we're happy to adopt any of the formats you, you uh, particularly are fond of, or if you have any changes to ours that you would require, we're happy to make those changes so that you really get what you're expecting from us. As I mentioned previously, we also provide engineering services for both electrical and structural. Uh, this is offered throughout the U.S. and through uh, most U.S. territories as well. And again, this can be offered independent of our, uh, our drafting options as well. If you're interested in any of our commercial engineering services, please contact your local CED location or CED Green Tech sales rep. Uh, great. Thanks, Blake. And, and just to connect Blake's uh, presentation on our engineering services to the uh, SunGrow and Tygo presentation, um, we've taken uh, we've taken a lot of the designs and, and market analysis that we've we've ha we've handled in our in our permit production um, services, and we've created a modular carport system. Uh, right now, it's available in the U.S. Southwest, uh, where there's uh, zero snow load <clears throat> and less than 110 mile per hour winds. But we've uh, optimized a carport system uh, to handle just about uh, any layout that could be required, 
and we partnered with SunGrow to be the uh, power conversion uh, partner on these projects. Um, the carports can be, they're, they're a modular system. They come in five distinct shapes and sizes, and you can drop them into your favorite design tool. Uh, lots of people like to use Helioscope, um, do a preliminary layout, and then your CED rep can take it from there and quote you a full carport system uh, using SunGrow if you like. This is a typical layout. And the kit comes in, in, with all the engineering, all the mechanical engineering, and then it also includes will include the site-specific uh, structural engineering to uh, integrate it to the site. And um, that was just a quick introduction to the engineering team, and I'll turn it over to Sungro and Tycho. Great, thank you very much. For those not familiar with SunGrow and our history and who we are, um, I'd like to take a few minutes and um, go over um, SunGrow's uh, Sun history, some of our capabilities, a little bit of the financials and the direction in which we're heading. SunGrow has been dedicated to clean energy for more than 25, uh, 24 years now, excuse, excuse me, almost 25 years. Um, we're headquartered in Hefei, China, which is a technology hub that affords abundant opportunities for innovation and collaboration. Although SunGrow's epicenter is in Hefei, we now have over 50 global subsidiaries, and we're the world's most bankable inverter brand. Bloomberg New Energy Financial released its first inverter bankability report in July of 2019. In that report, SunGrow was rated 100% bankable and the number one supplier in financed projects, among other global inverter firms demonstrating that projects using SunGrow inverters, whether um, utility, CNI, or residential, are more likely to obtain non-recourse debt financing from banks compared to other competitors. That rating was repeated just this last year as well. So for two consecutive years, we have been the only inverter manufacturer to receive the 100% bankability rating from Bloomberg. We have unmatched production capacity from multiple facilities. Um, just last March, SunGrow opened the world's largest inverter factory. Now that it's fully operational, the global production capacity surpasses 90 gigawatts per year. The manufacturing base is getting more and more digital, intelligent, and automated, which greatly improves both production efficiency. And through this evolution, SunGrow's products continue to achieve superior reliability. I'd like to go over a few SunGrow milestones here. Um, these are a few of the, uh, the the great achievements over the years that we'd like to, to highlight the most here. So um, it seems only appropriate to start at the beginning, right? So um, SunGrow was founded by university professor Kao Ren in 1997, and uh, he was a scholar, and then he converted over into the entrepreneur space. Um, he was really concerned with the rate of energy consumption and how renewable technology could find its place in traditional power generation industries. So he set up the business, SunGrow, in a humble lab with some co-founders. Co and just uh, just a year later, SunGrow's products were uh, beginning to be utilized widely in Western China. So in 2006, SunGrow products were delivered to Japan, the UK, the Netherlands for the first time, expanding the global market at large. In 2011, SunGrow was listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange as a publicly traded company there. And in 2014, uh, a storage subsidiary was launched for the pot potential energy storage market. In 2015, SunGrow secured the position of number one in shipments for the first time, and that ranking still remains. Now, in the last two years, we've made increasing investments in production capacity out of both strategy and necessity. Last year, the Bangalore manufacturing base was launched in India, and it's the first factory outside China with an annual capacity of about 10 gigawatts. I think that's increased uh, significantly this past year. Uh, between the two factories, SunGrow now produces more than 90 gigawatts in clean energy technology per year. And uh, next highlight here, in 2019, SunGrow became the first inverter manufacturer to realize over 100 gigawatts in total shipments. And finally, in 2020, SunGrow joined the RE100 initiative. Uh, which means that we're committed to 100% renewable energy for our, our operational basis. 2021 is going to be another fantastic year. 
it's going to be very impactful for our team and to the industry at large. All of the core businesses within SunGrow serve one continued mission, and that's clean power for all. It's simple but comprehensive, and we adopted this maximum in 2017, together with the new vision to be the global leader of clean energy conversion technology. This is to further consolidate the resolution of powering more communities in the world and taking better care of the environment. That's why we're all in this business. According to the latest statistics, uh, SunGrow generates about 129 billion kilowatt hours of clean energy and offsets over 103 million tons of CO2 per year. As a steward of our environment and our planet, SunGrow will continue to strive to deploy more clean energy around the world with the help from our valued customers and partners. All right, and I will hand the ball over to Tygo. All right, thank you, Nick. This is Gary Hesco with Tygo. Great to be here, and thanks for all of our partners and all of you attending for making all this happen. Uh, we're pri privileged to be here. And just want to go through a, a bit of uh, Tygo, what we do and who we are. So Tygo's been around um, almost 15 years now, actually more than a decade. We are in Silicon Valley, California. We say we're the leader in module level power electronics and especially rapid shutdown. We've been doing it longer than anyone. Our very first products in 2007, 2008 were capable of what we now call rapid shutdown. So we've been around a while. Products are very mature. They're very reliable, very solid. We have products, installations, and sales and service all over the world. We're truly a global company. And we produce, our sites produce over a gigawatt hour of, of energy every day. So what does Tygo bring to the table? There's three things. And I like to start conversations that way. So Tygo brings number one, performance. That is DC optimization to increase the energy output of your system. That scales with the amount of mismatch in the system. So if you have shading or mismatch from other sources such as differential soiling, then DC optimization will give you more production. Visibility. This is really important and I like to emphasize it because for some people I think it's not clear what the value is. But visibility, especially at the panel level, will tell you exactly what's going on with your system and allow you to get on top of problems before they start uh, becoming major. That will also give you more performance, more energy output because you're always fixing what happens and you've always, you're always getting peak output from your system. The other feature is safety. This is about not only rapid shutdown, which of course is required now, but it's also just about general safety for anyone who has to work around the system. We don't want anyone exposed to high voltage when they're working on or around the system. So Tygo, Tygo is really a hardware and software company. The hardware in terms of our TS4 products, which is our module level power electronics, but also software because our monitoring platform is very detailed, it's very precise, and it just gives you a wealth of information to keep your system operating at its peak. So I'm sure most of you realize by now, there's a lot of changes going on in the industry, but one of them is for rooftop solar, MLPE is now more or less a requirement. So what are the requirements? So as of NEC 2017 and later, we have a requirement to do rapid shutdown. And that means that all conductors within the array have to be down to 80 volts within 30 seconds. Also, it means all conductors from the array boundary down to the inverter have to be down to 30 volts within 30 seconds. Now that's all the NEC requirements really say about the specifics. How to implement this, of course, is up to the manufacturer and the installer and the system owner. So who has to comply? 2017 and later NEC is, is, it is in process of being implemented across the country, but it won't be long before it will be a requirement in every state. It's also being implemented internationally. 
what projects have to comply, okay? Probably most of you know that buildings in general are required to comply. What do you think about the system you see in the picture on the right, okay? It's um, a carport system. It's not a rooftop system. It's not on a building. But this project also had to comply. And the reason is that any system where the PV circuits enter a building that is used for any purpose other than housing PV equipment has to comply, okay? So you always wanna pay attention with your projects and do your due diligence to make sure because I have gotten calls from people who've been surprised okay? and you don't wanna be there. Now, certification. So if you read NEC 690.12, you will see in there that it requires not only that um, you have to comply with that the requirements I've already mentioned, but you also have to use listed equipment, okay? And the language in there is very important because it says you, you must use a system that is listed. What that means is that the inverter and the MLPE must be tested together and certified by a nationally recognized testing laboratory. And you'll see that abbreviated as NRTL, okay? Now, for all intents and purposes, UL is the dominant NRTL in the USA and most of North America. So we often talk about just a UL listing, but realize that it may, may or may not be UL, okay? That's what we mean by PVRSE RSE and PVRSS. So there is also an equipment listing. So each piece of equipment often gets its own uh, listing as a device. But what the NEC does require for rapid shutdown is that the system also be listed. And that is what Tygo does. What does the system look like? Right? So we have an MLPE device, the TS4. In this case, we're showing a dual device that works one per two panels. But we also have a single, which works one per panel. That is, in effect, a switch, okay? So re there is communication required to tell that switch when to switch off, okay? In the illustration here, we're showing the rapid shutdown transmitter, or RSS transmitter. That controls whether or not the system is up or down. And we call that AC loss because normally the way this works is that you will trip a, a switch that will cut off power to the transmitter in this case and the inverter. And of course, the transmitter can be built into the inverter. All right, so SunGrow and many other vendors um, will integrate this transmitter. And at this point, I'll turn it back to Nick talk a little bit more about SunGrow, and then I'll be back later to talk about some more specifics with our TS4 products. Thanks a lot, Gary. Appreciate that. So we're gonna get a little bit more in detail on SunGrow and its offerings. Um, so there's a, a little bit more here on, on the background, um, and we just want everybody to be aware of our, our market capabilities and footprint here in, in uh, deciding who to partner with and where SunGrow is going, just to um, give some context to the availability and uh, longevity of our products. So uh, SunGrow always keeps sustainable development as its guidepost, okay? So the, the company continues to see a steady and rapid development as is seen by the graphs here. Our compound annual growth rate of revenue from 2010 to 2019 was 42.6%. While achieving 15% global market share as of 2019, SunGrow also has accumulated more than 100 gigawatts of total installations. And this is across all of our product portfolios. So one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is to kind of ride the coattails of what Gary was talking about here. The evolution of the NEC and the rapid shutdown requirements is extremely important and we have seen a consolidation in the market and uh, you know, making these inroads and these strategic partnerships with companies like Tygo to ensure code compliance is something that SunGrow is really, uh, really very focused on to ensure that, that your, your projects are gonna meet all the requirements moving forward and that we are here with our partners to support you, uh, both in um, your product selection and uh, technical capability. The performance is undoubtedly the result of SunGrow's continuous investment in innovation. 
According to our annual report internally, SunGrow invested over $90 million in research and development in 2019. Uh, we're, we're just now gathering those numbers for the, the end of 2020. Over 40% of our personnel are assigned to the R&D team, meaning that we have the largest and most well-funded research and development team in the industry. And this also involves strategically investing and partnering with companies like Tygo to meet market demands in different parts of the world. We have over 2,000 patent applications cumulatively, and we're the leader in patent holdings for inverter technology. So as such, core technology really is the permanent power of SunGrow, and we'll continue to invest in this technological innovation and strategic partnerships. SunGrow also has a world-class testing center. This is important uh, because we need to make sure that every product passes rigorous inspections. So you're looking at one of uh, SunGrow's central inverters there, uh, but we do test every single one of our products in what you're looking at here, which is a 10 meter anechoic chamber. This testing center in, in our headquarters in Hefei, China has been certified by TUV Rhineland, TUV SUD, CSA, UL, and others. It's also China's first company, SunGrow is, which secured the WMT certification given by TUV Rhineland. Uh, WMT stands for Witness Manufacturers Testing. In 2016, SunGrow launched this 10 meter anechoic chamber that you can see. It tests large electrical equipment like the central inverter that you're looking at now, um, as heavy as five, uh, uh, sorry, as large as five megawatts, and it, it, uh, it can support equipment as heavy as 20 tons. Uh, this is to ensure electromagnetic capability. Um, and by employing the Rode and Schwartz EMC testing system, this chamber can reach test accuracy equal to that of major third party testing organizations. So what this does is it uh, translates reducing the product price point for you, the end user and the purchaser, the owner of a project. It also accelerates our development and delivery pipeline. So when research and development um, tests and develops a prototype, we can get it tested much more quickly in this WMT certified testing center so that it can be available to you a lot more quickly. With the efforts of our dedicated SunGrow staff, you can see that our products are installed in over 150 com uh, countries with over 20 subsidiaries and 110 service outlets. SunGrow really does have a mature and sophisticated service footprint and a very large global footprint as well. So now I'd like to get into the product itself. When we're talking about CNI rooftop projects, the two offerings that SunGrow has in the 1000 volt DC realm uh, operating at 480 volts AC is the SG36CX-US and the SG60CX-US. I think that I've seen on the attendee list here that we have um, we have some some folks that are attending uh, internationally, which is fantastic. We really appreciate you being here. We do have a different product offering um, for IEC regions. So if you have specific questions on uh, maybe some some alternate product offerings in your specific uh, geographic location, please reach out to me. Uh, contact information will will be available afterwards, I believe. Um, and we can get you hooked up with the, the proper uh, the proper sales entity in your region. So the big difference between the two inverters, as you can see, is a, a slight a slight difference in the form factor between the 36 and the 60. The 36 has four PowerPoint trackers independent, and the 60 has six PowerPoint trackers. Uh, both of these CX inverters, the commercial extreme inverters have Stobly MC4 connectors for our DC inputs. All the connections are made externally. Uh, what this rendering is not showing you is the AC wiring box that we have for AC conductor termination, as well as the communication buckle, which is at the bottom of the inverter here. Now, inside of the inverter, we have integrated the Tygo RSS transmitter, and we've joined the Tygo Enhanced Initiative. We're a proud partner with them, so for all of our, our US uh, products, both the 36 and the 60 currently, and the, the new uh, CNI products that are under development, um, we are going to be partnering with Tygo to have the RSS transmitter um, integrated inside of the inverter. So when you purchase the inverter and it arrives at your site, it's going to be ready to be uh, coupled and installed with your Tygo NLPE. 
couple of highlights about the two products here. You'll notice a lot of parallels between uh, the, the main bullets from the, the data sheet here. Um, between the 36 and the 60, we both have uh, uh, a DC to AC ratio of up to 1.5. Now, depending on your module selection, we are capable of exceeding that DC to AC ratio um, and bifacial module compatibility. Um, really, the caveat to that is that if you're going to be exceeding a 1.5 DC to AC ratio uh, with these inverters in your string sizing, we ask that you reach out to us and uh, just to get another set of eyes on your string design to make sure that we are staying within our maximum input ISC short circuit current. Now, being that these inverters have direct uh, direct DC input with the Stobley MC4 EVO2 connectors, there are two strings per PowerPoint tracker, so we do have a fuseless design. Uh, between the, the new CX products that you're looking at right here and the previous iteration, of some gross commercial products, we did um, kind of change the form factor a little bit. We went from more of a vertical, uh, a vertically integrated uh, tall body to a, a horizontal body inverter chassis. Um, that allows for some more efficient cooling with the inverters. Um, both of the machines are NEMA 4X rated. Um, I know that that seems like kind of a, a moot point or a given, uh, but it is something that we like to highlight, um, mostly because paired with the NEMA 4X rating for outdoor applications. They do come standard with C5 anti-corrosion rating as well. So that really does expand the radius with which you can consider installing your projects. They're suitable for both coastal applications, harsh environments with water reclamation facilities or former landfills, you know, places where uh, conditions are a little harsh. Quick exploded view of the inverter here for you, just to kind of give you a visual representation of the thermal path of the forced air cooling. We do use uh, forced air cooling on all of our string inverter products, as well as central inverter products. What that does is it really does allow for more effective and efficient cooling. Um, there are some inverter manufacturers out there that have a natural convection cooling, or what we call passive cooling. Um, and while that does increase the efficiency of the inverter a little bit, it, it, does, uh, it does increase the operational temperature of the critical electronic components. So for every 10 degrees Celsius in temperature rise for these critical electronic components, you can expect to get your, uh, or expect to see the, the lifetime of those critical electronic components cut in half. With these new CX inverters, we do have uh, a very quick installation time. So once all of your um, ancillary equipment has been put in place, the inverters can be installed and terminated in about five minutes. So what you're looking at on the left-hand side is what we call the X-Rack. This is an inverter accessory available directly from SunGrow. Uh, so it, it comes with the inverter should you choose to purchase it alongside. Um, and that gives you uh, a 10 degree tilt and it's uh, steel rooftop friendly. So you can install it on top of your uh, your uh, commercial and industrial applications and get that, that 10 degree tilt that you're looking for to install um, under module uh, or just get a little bit lower profile on rooftop there. And as I mentioned before, uh, the rendering that didn't include the AC wiring box is now shown in the photo on the right-hand side. So the AC wiring box um, does come with the inverter, obviously, but um, it is a separate unit. So once the inverter and the AC wiring box are installed together in your application, it essentially becomes one contiguous unit. Uh, however, it does allow for faster troubleshooting um, a little bit safer termination during installation and commissioning. Uh, so if something were to happen with the inverter down the road and you needed to replace it or, uh, you know, remove it for troubleshooting or an RMA, um, you don't need to worry about determining your AC connections there. We talked a little bit about the integrated uh, RSS transmitter in all of the SunGrow CX series products. Um, this is just a, a, a nice, uh, simple um, diagram that shows the, the three different um, kind of system formats that we offer with the uh, rapid shutdown MLPE, uh, as well as the compatibility with the Tago optimizer solution. 
Now being SunSpec certified, the SunGrow inverters are compatible with really any monitoring solution uh, that's out there, uh, whether you know you select Tygo or a, a different monitoring solution, but we're, uh, we're ready to go and ready to be interfaced with really anything out there that most of our CNI customers um, select. And we know that you have your preferential relationships with your monitoring platform. So, um, you know, by standardizing the communication protocol there, we're ready to interface with uh, whatever monitoring solution you prefer. All right. And this is a great segue into the relationship that Sungro and Tygo have here. So I will go ahead and hand it back off to Gary. Great. Thanks, Nick. That was a very good, uh, good introduction there. All right, so <clears throat> let's get into the details of the TS4 platform and how it can help you with your projects. We're going to talk about two different products today. We're going to talk about our fire safety products, which do only rapid shutdown at a very attractive price point and very reliably. And we're also going to talk about our optimizer, our TS4O which does also monitoring and rapid, uh, sorry, monitoring rapid shutdown and DC optimization. In the picture here is our A2F, which is our latest product. This is a dual, uh, a dual um, MLPE device. So this is for two panels and it does, ra again, rapid shutdown only. This is our fire safety product. Now here is our single TS4AF this is, again, rapid shutdown only. This is our fire safety product. And this actually works with, our, works with the RSS transmitter that Nick was talking about earlier. The limits on this device are 500 watts per channel. So, and the single is a single channel device, right? Up to 90 volts, 15 amps per PV module. Snaps to the module frame. There's no additional grounding required no additional hardware or bolts to install. Pairs again with the RSS transmitter, which can be built into the SunGrow inverter, as Nick talked about. All right, very easy to install. These can be installed in about 10 seconds each for each unit. Here is the A2F. Now the A2F works with two panels, two modules. So the specs are the same for each channel in this device, because it has two channels, as, it, as the single that I just showed you. Okay, so 500 watts per channel, 1,000 watts for the entire device. All right, Tygo uses MC4 standard connectors made by Steubly. You definitely want to pay attention to the connectors. They're, it's just a little thing, but they can be very important when selecting other equipment like your, your PV modules and so on. All right, again, just snaps to the module frame, the aluminum frame. If you don't have a frame, if you have a frameless module, you can remove these clips and it'll install with bolts to racking or whatever you have nearby. So here's the installation steps. You clip the unit to the module frame. Again, no, no hardware required. It just, there are teeth that grab onto the module frame. So it's a very secure connection. You first connect the unit to the PV module, and then you connect the PV, well, I should say the, the TS4s together in a string. Okay, it's important to connect it to the module first. All right, so we talked about our fire safety product, which does only rapid shutdown. Now let's talk about our optimizer, the TS4AO. This does all three Tygo features. It does optimization, monitoring, and rapid shutdown. Now, one unique thing about the TS4O is that it can be used without any communication device. You can use the O just by itself, and it will optimize. It doesn't, of course, do monitoring or rapid shutdown without communications equipment because both of those features require communication, but it will optimize all by itself. All right, the TS4O actually can also be used in what we call selective deployment with our, our safety product, TS4S, as in safety. So those can be mixed on the same system if optimization is only needed in certain areas. All right, once again, with monitoring, you get all of the module level details. 
not only what the system is doing right now, of course, but what it's been doing in the recent past as well. And that can be very helpful for diagnosing, diagnosing issues with your system. Tygo monitoring. So again, I wanna stress the importance of this because if you have monitoring at the panel level, you can see exactly what's going on. You can see if there are problems that start to arise, you can catch them early, make sure those problems get addressed efficiently because you know exactly what panels are involved in an issue, then you can roll a truck and know exactly what you need to replace before the truck rolls. And then your time spent on site is very efficient. And of course, most importantly, you keep the system operating at its peak performance. So important. I have seen cases where problems go unnoticed and energy is lost um, in, in quantities that are hard to, hard to fathom. Um, you don't want to be in that situation. Okay. Now, one thing we've recently added to our monitoring portal is reclaimed energy. So you see here on the, the, the little green bars on top of the bars here, that is energy that's been, that's been gained because of optimization. Okay. So we're very upfront about what the benefit of optimization is to your system, and you can see it right off the bat. All right. So for more information, you can uh, take a look at uh, some of our reference material and website, and of course, contact us anytime you have questions, if you need help with a project, um, if you've got um, anything that, uh, that we can do to make your experience uh, successful, we're happy to do so. And my phone is always open. I do pick up the phone, so uh, please, please do call or uh, email us and we will respond. All right, very good. So with that, I'll turn it back to our hosts. And yeah, I want to definitely want to thank Solar Power World, um, SunGrow, and CD Green Tech for doing this with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to keep submitting those into the Q and A box. Um, so we will start off by um, talking about this person asked. Can we go over the Tygo SunGrow monitoring, monitoring solution? Um, they would like to know if you would use the Tygo platform, the SunGrow monitoring, or both. Uh, yeah, I'll, st I'll start with that one. Uh, you can use, of course, both. Uh, if you want the panel level information, then, of course, you can get that through the Tygo portal. Um, I should also mention that our Cloud Connect Advance, which is our data logger, um, can monitor any other devices that have a, um, a Modbus output. So if you have weather stations or um, maybe a revenue grade meter, or if you have your, or if your inverter outputs uh, Modbus, then those can all be monitored with the CCA on the Tygo portal. So you can combine that way. But of course, there's many other ways as well. And I'll turn it over to my partners uh, who might want to say something further. Yeah, thanks, um, Gary. This is nothing... Nick oh, from. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I, I don't really have anything else to add to that. I, I, I think Gary really covered it very well. Um, when it when it comes to monitoring solutions in North America, SunGrow really um, is is somewhat agnostic. You know, we uh, will we'll support really any monitoring solution that's out there. Um, should you elect to uh, to go with Tygo's monitoring option that they have, which is very sophisticated. Um, and, and cost effective as well. Um, Tygo and SunGrow will, you know, continue in our partnership to support the project, you know, from from front uh, front end to the development all the way through commissioning. So uh, we're we're there, and you know, our, our service team is world class. So if there's something that uh, that SunGrow can't help with uh, over the phone, then it'll get escalated internally, and, and we'll work directly with Tygo um, to to help you guys out. So I, I think that it is a really effective solution. Great, thank you. The next question, what are Tygo's plans for more powerful modules that are entering the rooftop market? All right, yeah, I'll take that one. We actually have products in the pipeline to handle more powerful modules. And in fact, we are planning uh, uh, many future products that will handle more powerful modules. So 
we are working on this for sure. And I would say stay tuned for our news. There is going to be some news soon um, on uh, our, our next uh, more, more powerful unit. So yes, we are definitely on top of this. Thank you. Um, this next question, someone's asking for some more detail on the different CED green tech permitting packages. Can, can you tell them where to go for that? I think the, the best way to kind of get more detail would be to reach out to your local CED uh, green tech reps. Uh, they're going to be able to provide you with the details you need. We don't have um, anything detailed further with our, with our offerings at the moment. Thank you. Um, someone's wondering if you can mix single and double TS4 AS on the same string. This is Gary. Yes, absolutely. In fact, any of our fire safety products are interchangeable even within the same string. So the, the integrated TS4F uh, that's installed on the panel, the uh, TS4AF single unit, the older TS4RF, and the TS4A2F, they can all be freely mixed on the same string. Thank you. Um, uh, this next person is wondering if CED Green Tech offers O&M services for solar plants. And they also are asking if the SunGrow inverters are field serviceable. CED does not offer O&M services at this time. And as far as the, uh, the, the SunGrow inverters being field serviceable, uh, the answer is yes and no. Um, the, the, the no does have a qualifier to it. It's not that they cannot be serviced in the field. It's just that with string inverters, it's usually a binary process, right? If you have an issue with an inverter, you know, whether it's a, a failure or a fault that won't clear, um, you know, something else happened, maybe you got hit by a transient or uh, some other uh, grid anomaly or I mean, there's just physical damage on site during installation. Um, you know, you just deem out the, uh, uh, the effective inverter, um, and then the, the RMA will show up with a replacement, and you put the you put the good inverter up in the, in the bad inverter's place, and send the defective inverter back to some growth for AD and failure analysis. Um, there, there are again after the the warranty period has expired on the inverters, um, you know you you can service the fans in the field. Um, you know the fans are are designed to have I mean, the, the the MTBF mean time before failure. Uh, on the fans that we've selected and sourced for this inverter um, is I think somewhere around 135,000 hours of operation. So, uh, you know, you should, you should be okay. But, you know, like I said, if, if the fans do get uh, affected or, or something happens to them, it is a very, very simple replacement. They're modularized, and all you need is a, is a Phillips head screwdriver to replace the fans. So uh, there, there are uh, really very few field replaceable units or FRUs in some of those string inverters and the, the easiest process we found in the most economical process um, with you know, minimizing truck rolls and hours of technician boots on the ground is to just deem out the inverter and submit an RMA. Thank you. This next question, um, what is the length of the warranty for Tygo and SunGrow? Uh, okay, so speaking for Tygo, the our MLPE, the TS4, is is warranty for 25 years. Excellent. And for SunGrow, um, the uh, the CX series of inverters uh, are 10 year 10 year inverter warranties, and that that warranty is extendable up to 25 years. Great, thank you. The next question, is there an integrated AC disconnect on these inverters? Yes, great question. Uh, both AC and DC disconnects are integrated on the CX series inverters, yep. Thank you. Um, the next question, 
this person's wondering if SunGrow has any plans for a 208 volt inverter. Um, they say the demand is high for this segment in New York and New Jersey. Yeah, that, that is also a good question. Um, the, the answer that I have for you today is, is unclear. Um, we, we do have a, a 208 volt solution for other global markets. Uh, however, at this time, we're just not entirely certain if, uh, um, if we're going to be releasing a, a 208 volt um, solution for, for CNI here in the U.S. You know, we really do like to um, really focus on uh, kind of a, a specialized product portfolio for CNI. And uh, it, it does seem like the, the 3660 uh, inverter denomination operating at 480 volts allows us to provide a, a, a truly superior product to the market. So that's that's what we're focusing on right now. Um, but again, with such a large R&D team, um, the, the engineering team here in North America is, is just not entirely sure. Uh, we do have some plans to expand into other markets in the U.S. where we have a very large footprint in other, uh, in other global regions. So um, I, I would stay tuned for that. Um, it, it's certainly not uh, not out of the realm of possibility for a, a 208 solution to enter the market sometime in the near future. But um, for our, our current offering for 2021 and 2022, we do not have any plans for a 208 solution. Thank you. Um, this next person is wondering about the failure rates of the air cooling fans in the inverter um, and what people can expect for their lifetime. Yeah, great question. And I, I think I alluded to it a little bit earlier. The forced air cooling fans that we source have a, an operational life of uh, around 135,000 hours, and that, that's mean time before failure. Uh, so, you know, we, we designed the inverters to operate for uh, a minimum of 25 years. That's, that's the, the guaranteed uh, lifespan uh, for all of the CX products. So the, uh, the, the goal was to source fans that are actually MEMA 6P rated. Um, you know, so they, they are encased um, and can withstand um, you know, some, some pretty extreme conditions and they have uh, a, a very long operational life. So with the inverters being designed to operate for, uh, for, for 25 years total, um, unless there is some kind of surge or transient that affects the fans, um, then, then you really shouldn't have any fan failures. That's, that's the goal. Thank you. This next person is wondering what the maximum input is for these inverters. Great, yeah. Uh, the 36 CX US, US and the 60 CX US are uh, both 1000 volt DC inverters. Um, so if you're asking about DC input, the maximum uh, PV input voltage is 1000 volts. Um, the, uh, the MPP voltage range between the two inverters is uh, 200 on the low end and 1,000 at the top end. So we will operate in, uh, in MPP mode for um, you know, a pretty wide window. So it is, it is 200 to uh, 2,000 volts there. Nominal PV input voltage is around 710 volts. So that's what you, what, what, what you can expect to see um, on the, the DC input bus during nominal operation is about 710, but our uh, maximum PowerPoint tracking window is 200 to 1,000. Um, if you're asking about the maximum PV short circuit current input, uh, that's per tracker and on both inverters, it's 45 amps. Awesome, thank you. Um, those are all the questions that we have time for today. If you have any additional questions or we didn't get to yours, please feel free to contact our presenters on your own. Again, this webinar will be shared with all registrants so you can view it again at your convenience. I'd like to thank Nick, Gary, Blake, and Stuart again for being here, and SunGrow for sponsoring today's webinar. And thank you to everyone in our audience for participating. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and we invite you to join us for more Solar Power World webinars. Thanks everyone.